Hello everyone, so today we're going to take a look at TOEFL listening, specifically connecting content questions. Okay, so with these question types, um, there are different kinds of them. So one kind, um, like the one here, can ask you to, you know, select uh, two things, two options to get the right answer. And sometimes they can, you know, ask you to uh, select a few characteristics of something, qualities, attributes. These are pretty common, common types or reasons. Um, another kind can be related to cause and effect. Um, there's another that's related to making some kind of prediction based on information you already have in your notes. Another one is like a table. Uh, it, it involves categorization or classification. And so they could give you two categories, right? Like, let's say... Um, birds and mammals and so like you have these items you have these options and one of them says eagle well an eagle isn't a mammal so you would drop it in the bird column and another one says like kangaroo or something well you would drag and drop that in the mammal column and there's a few other items and you would obviously you know sort them out till you're done uh, or maybe there's another table about like fruits and vegetables and you put tomato, let's say, in the vegetable column, and you put like, you know, the carrot in the vegetable column as well, but the apple and the oranges, uh, you put them in the fruit column, okay? So that's the point. Anyway, let's take a look at a few of them today, and this will become a little bit more clear for you guys. So here, what does the woman imply about the construction plans? Oh, okay, so this is kind of a combinational question. Uh, it is a connecting content question and it's also an inference question. So a little bit more challenging, just be a little bit cautious, okay? So you wanna find um, where they're referring to construction plans and they might not use this language explicitly, but you'll know they're discussing it uh, when you take a look at your notes. Okay, so this was involving a conversation. The head of maintenance um, was, uh, asked about so here we're not going to look at students we're going to look at this column instead okay help you da, da, da. so something about construction plans no none of this is about that but then when i come here i see oh i i wish it wasn't done this way this doesn't make sense but this decision so okay i remember this in the audio so we're in the right spot now you want to read this and understand what you've you know written in your notes so i uh, I wish this wasn't done the way, this way. This doesn't make any sense, but this particular decision was made by a special committee and this plan was finalized several months ago and they didn't realize there would be students in Roberts Hall uh, right now. Okay, so now let's come to our answer options, our answer choices. So choice A, they cannot be changed at this point. Yeah, it did sound like they were finalized or something. So see here, uh, and any information after transition devices, really important guys, particular decision, the specific decision was made by a committee. Well, they have authority on this, right? So it's probably gonna be a permanent decision. Um, and they mentioned the word finalize, huge keyword uh, several months ago, yeah. And so it is A, but what are our other options? Because we need to select one more too. It is unfortunate that they were approved. Yeah. Um, this unfortunate is a key word here, guys, because here she mentioned, I wish they didn't do this, basically. I wish, you know, they weren't done this way. Okay, so there we are. But just check C and D, just kind of understand why they're wrong. They have uh, been changed several times already, not mentioned. They were not improved until very recently. This is kind of vague. They said a few months ago, but I don't know if that counts as recent or not. It's not quite clear. Um, not the best choice, so A and B are more clear. We have evidence for them, so these are your right answers. Select them and move on. Okay, so now let's take a look at a few more, this time coming from a lecture. So here, we're dealing with a process this time. The professor describes a process for making glass discs. So uh, find the part of your notes related to this, right? Summarize the process by putting the steps in the correct order. Yes, every single process, obviously, guys comes with steps or sequences. Okay, so we come to our notes, right? That's the first thing we should do after reading the question. Okay, so it was about the process of glass making. I'm gonna keep scrolling down till I find that section in my notes. Right here, okay, so two stages of glass making. 
but um, okay, this is the one we need right here. They go into the steps. <coughs> Excuse me. So the primary production had several steps. Um, and usually uh, what happens on the exam, guys, to make it easier for yourself, when they use sequence markers, these are those transition words or devices that are like, first, firstly, you know, first of all, first off, or to begin with, or they say stuff like secondly, or also, but they use other words too, like especially in processes, you'll expect to see words like then, uh, next, later, after that. You know, maybe finally depends. And they might throw multiple thens and next two. So it does happen. So here, um, now what you want to do, you still don't want to look at your answer choices, but you want to see what the first two or three um, details are, uh, the first two or three lines of your notes, essentially. So take quartz and crush it. And if you don't know what crushed means, uh, like basically to destroy or quartz, which is a kind of mineral, it's okay. You could still technically get these right if you did write them, okay? That's the key, you gotta take notes, guys. So, quartz crushed, I just removed the vowels, it was just faster for me to write, then take the crushed quartz, <laughs> kind of paraphrasing what they said, and mix it with plant ash. Okay, and there's like some other kind of noun there. All right, so quartz crush, crush quartz, plant ash, wanna find something related to these words and jargon. So glass-like material is grabbed up and, no, uh, I don't see anything that I read there, that's gonna come next or later. Powder material is heated at very high temps, no. Um, crush quartz, there we go. Does D have anything about that? No, so you know C is your answer. Crush quartz, plant ash, and probably after it has something about heated at low temperatures. Even if you didn't have this in your notes, you already have enough sufficient proof or evidence that choice C is the first um, uh, option, option you wanna put in order. So I don't have that feature in this practice test, but there'll be something on the exam that will let you, you know, place in order. Okay, so C is first, what's the second one? So let's come back. Um, all right, so at relatively low temperatures, yeah, that was part of um, choice C. Small containers like jars are made from clay, okay, and they yield a glassy material. Okay, this sounded kind of, um, sounds kind of important here. They take this glassy material and when they repeat um, some of these uh, concepts or details, that's like a huge sign that they're probably gonna mention this in the answer options or choices and ground up into powder and something about metal dye colors, okay. So there's the glassy like material and they ground it up and yeah, there's the part about the dye. So C, A is next, now we're down to B and D. Okay, powder material, but let's just keep reading in order just to be safe. Okay, pour the colored powder into disc-shaped molds. Okay, so disc-shaped molds um, and heat it up with uh, very high temperatures. Okay, so disc-shaped molds, heat it up, right? And turned up to those high temperatures. After it was cool, they would break the molds inside those glass discs. Okay, so let's see here. Um, powder material is heated at very high temps, temperatures. Yeah, sounds right. So C, A, B, that leaves D with the last one we put in order. So C, um, A, B, and D are the correct answers here, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at another one here. Okay, so question four, based on the lecture, what are two kinds of glass objects? Uh, that were valued, so that were respected, right? That were basically seen as precious in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. So find that bit about the two kinds of objects in your notes, guys. So these are our keywords. Okay. And sometimes just an advanced tip, uh, if you're really not finding in your notes or you have a trouble reading your handwriting, perhaps, you know, maybe read the first item that way it warms up your mind um, and you might see it, you never know. Okay, so I remember it was like somewhere in the middle of the passage, I guess. So that was about the process, I gotta keep going. So okay, anytime a student asks the teacher a question or if, uh, sorry, the lecture, or if the lecture, the professor basically asks a student a question, 
No, sometimes these are sections and they'll elaborate on some kind of specific subconcept or subtopic. Just be aware of it. So what kind of objects were people making back then? Um, most common ones were beads. Okay, there we go. That was the first one. That was easy, very explicit. Uh, it was directly mentioned. These are precious stones, again, referring to beads, like emeralds, again, referring to beads. I need the second one. It was difficult to distinguish or differentiate. And so anytime, guys, uh, when you're dealing with this question type, connecting content um, type, anytime you run into conjunctions like an or and or uh, as well as or maybe even, you know, adding transition devices like additionally, in addition, moreover, furthermore, what's more those are really powerful because they'll usually mention the second or third item, whatever it is. So, and they, there were beautiful vessels. Now, um, maybe it's not the primary meaning of vessels. It could be the secondary or tertiary meaning, be careful. So what you want to do is read the rest of it to get context guys. Okay. So you, you don't want to think, Oh, this is referring to blood vessels. That's not going to make sense. Okay. This is not about biology here. This is about history class and it's not like vessels as in the ancient ships. Okay. So with narrow necks, okay. S kind of sounds like you could put something inside it, like a container or something. Uh, so they were probably valuable. So they weren't used to hold cooking oil. Okay. There you go. It's definitely a container and they were probably used for expensive liquids or fluids like perfume. Oh, okay. So that's what they were used for. So what, what are two kinds of glass objects that were valued in ancient Egypt Mesopotamia? Beads was easy. Um, the only way you could get this one wrong is if you didn't write it in your notes at all, to be honest. Choice B, cooking utensils? No. Um, they didn't refer to anything like spoons and forks and knives or anything like that. Uh, they did mention some details about cooking, but it has nothing to do with this answer choice here. They said that the vessels, which are containers, and this is our correct answer choice, by the way, uh, weren't used to store oil. That's what they mentioned. Okay. So indirectly we can infer they're referring to containers. Okay. And they didn't mention anything about windows. So A and C are your correct answers. All right. So one last one, question five, according to the professor, what are two reasons? So this time they're not talking about like qualities or attributes, but we have two reasons. That's fine. Why ancient Egyptians exported glass. Okay. So what are they? We got to, um, you know, find this in our notes. So, okay. Um, exported glass. These are the keywords. So why did the ancient Egyptians do that? Okay. So let's see, what are the reasons for that? And I remember, um, from my understanding, it came like e either was the last section or the second to the last section from memory. So I'm going to kind of go through my notes really quick. Okay. Glass factories made and the fact that, okay, there's something about red copper, uh huh? Any kind of glass valuable. So red bottles owned by wealthy people. Okay. Because, um, different make and, and mysterious and complicated. Okay. Probably a product for the Royal family and used, uh, okay. And they use this class to show power, um, power, their power basically, and like their authority and the beautiful expensive objects make great gifts. If you're establishing political alliances and that, okay. And it's possible that ancient, okay. There's Egypt right there and, uh, and ancient Egypt exported glass. And so they weren't making or importing. Aha. Uh -huh. So they were sending it uh, as well. So stop right there. Let, let's come back. Let's not overread. To build relationships with foreign leaders. Yeah. They said they could make alliances with other countries or nations. Um, I don't know if they said leaders, but let's see here again. Establish political alliances and well, okay. I mean, it's kind of implying that right with other countries. Okay. Now let's look at um, the rest of the information. Uh, the trade with Mesopotamia, I just wrote Meso for short, it's just easier. It was probably a friendly one because Mesopotamian glass was white or yellow. So they would say something like, like we'll give you guys two white ones for two red glass discs. Okay. Um, and just an advanced tip guys, anytime you're dealing with TOEFL conversations or lectures, always pay attention to the last bit of information. So when you are taking notes, write 
when you're at the end, write that very last statement that they say. Sometimes there are questions related to it. And you'll see that in this um, kind of question as well. To hold cooking oil that was sold in other countries? What? No, that doesn't make any sense. That's not... It, I didn't read anything about that. To get bronze tools from other countries? That doesn't make sense either. I saw nothing about bronze. And so it has to be choice D, but let's understand why. To acquire, right? To get colors of glass not made in Egypt. Yeah. So, you know, they mentioned the white or yellow glass, whatever it was um, here. And, you know, they basically exchanged them, you know, for two red ones. All right. So that's it. I hope you like this one and I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, please like, share and subscribe and hit the no notification bell.